Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to continue the work with the five different uh, Peltier coolers. So as you can see I have a 3, 6, 8, 10 and 15 amperes uh, unit. So quite a wide spectrum of uh, different units. And what I'm going to do now is a bit different from the other uh, experiments that I've been doing in the past. So let me explain. So what you can see here, this is the same CPU cooler that I was using. If you haven't seen those videos, first of all, I recommend you to check it. But uh, then I can also explain it here what happens. So this is the CPU cooler, which I use to cool down the hot side of the Peltier devices. So it is attached to this uh, part with the copper uh, uh, heat pipes. And uh, luckily enough, uh, this surface is uh, 4 by 4 uh, centimeters, so it is exactly uh, matches the surface area of this Peltier cooler, which is also 4 by 4 centimeter. So then I have uh, two fans on it, and uh, the airflow is in this direction. So this is from another CPU cooler with a smaller surface area. So I took it. Uh, from that one and uh, put it on this and also there is a fan in between the two uh, parts of the heatsink and then what is more different uh, as compared to the previous experiments is that I have this kind of small cast aluminum uh, box and uh, it's 87 grams this will be important in the future and also you can see that the bottom side is sealed with some sort of foam. Actually this foam is specifically made for Peltier coolers. So if you can see that this is uh, perfectly matching the side and you even have these notches for the cables. So the bottom will be uh, isolated from the environment. So this will be mounted in this way. And the reason why I do this because I try to see that how much time it takes to freeze 100 grams of water filled in this uh, box with the different Peltier coolers because that gives us a better uh, overview of their performance so we will see how they behave and this is like a two millimeter thick uh, so the heat transfer should be nice and we know the mass of it and we know that it is an aluminum so we can uh, do some calculations based on the amount of water and the amount of aluminum that the cooler has to deal with. And what I did here is that I upgraded my clamping mechanism a little bit. So the cooler will be placed uh, like this. And then I put a cooler. First of all, of course, I will use my thermal grease and I will put it on this like this and then uh, you know that the notches should match the cables so that uh, will go on if I can find it and then I will clamp it on uh, eventually uh, the cable should go this side sorry so it will be mounted like this and then I use this uh, aluminium profile this is used for example for 3d printers or anything that you try to build but luckily enough the gap between the uh, top of the fan and the back side of the heatsink is just uh, around two centimeters so I can put this in uh, in between and it's very tight connection and then I used my 3d printer and maybe it's better in this background you can see I made, the, made this uh, I don't know s sort of s shaped uh, unit or clamp so you can see it's something like this we have these so-called uh, T nuts and they fit in the slot of this profile so what I do is that I can clamp down the cooler together with the box so this will give us a very good uh, pressure and therefore uh, it will give a good contact uh, between the Peltier cooler's cold side and the uh, box and the Peltier cooler's hot side and the CPU cooler. So I will clamp it down and then uh, I will use 
this, which is a polystyrene box. So as you can see, I have these notches for the for these uh, clamps, and uh, this will go on like this uh, on the on the aluminum box. And as you can see, let me just clean up the mess. Uh, this is much deeper. So one thing is that the box can go deep down and also it's insulated uh, more or less well because uh, it can go quite deep. Of course there are some exposed areas but uh, we are not uh, trying to reach the perfect uh, environment but uh, we try to uh, exclude let's say most of the heat which is going from the environment. So then the top of this I will probably record this with the camera but this will be uh, covered by a plexiglass or, or something transparent. Maybe I just put this uh, uh, wrapping foil over it. So I just want to uh, hinder the uh, convection but I still want to see through. And then this will be filled up with the uh, required amount of water which will be let's say 100 grams. I tested it and it can almost accommodate uh, 150 grams of water but then the water level would be very very close to the edge and then if I just uh, bounce this or just uh, do something accidentally I will spill the water everywhere on my table and of course I don't want that when I'm running uh, 10 amperes uh, through this unit and so on so I just fill it up with 100 grams of water or 100 milliliter and then we will see how everything works out. So the goal would be to measure all of these and I will measure the basically the time required uh, to cool down the water and I still have my three different thermometers so one uh, thermometer will be definitely in this uh, box uh, close to the top surface of the of the uh, water level and then I will also try to monitor the outlet temperature and the other side the other side of the heat sink so somewhere uh, between this uh, metal uh, profile and the back side of the heat sink as you can see that's I can basically try to rebuild this so that's that's the back side of the heat sink and in my previous experiments I uh, clamped uh, the one of the uh, K-type thermocouples against uh, the fins of this, so uh, there is more space there. So I put it there. That that was basically the hot side temperature. So here I tried to do the same, and uh, we will see what happens. But uh, basically, this is what we have. So to summarize again. We will use a CPU cooler to keep the hot side of these units uh, more or less uh, cold. But the cold means, let's say, 30, 40 degrees uh, Celsius. And then uh, we will just try to apply as much current as possible uh, to these units and see how their cooling performance works. And then again, I will measure the temperature. I will check when the uh, total amount of water transformed into ice and uh, we will assess uh, all these data and numbers and have some conclusions. So I have to assemble this system and then we can uh, start our experiments. So let's uh, start with the uh, 3 ampere unit because that's the smallest one and it will take uh, most of the time I guess uh, to cool down the water inside this.